Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first allocator governance call of April 16th. Let's take a look at what we have on the agenda for today. The call is going to focus in three parts, just like last time. And the first part is going to be issues related to you as allocators. We're going to start off by talking about what are the responsibilities that allocators need to be adhering to in the program, and then how do these responsibilities carry forward into issues like data cap refresh. We'll also check in on the weekly distribution schedule. This was a big blocker in the last two weeks, so kind of give you updates on where that stands. And then check in on some of the recent bug reports that have come through, like the CID checker not working. We'll circle back to some of the updates from the Fiddle team and look at the tooling that they have in progress, and then end it with some recent updates to the FAQs that have come through in Slack. As always, we anticipate any kind of discussion at the end. So if there's any topics that you wanted to see brought up, feel free to bring a hand if we're in the topic, or at the end of the call, we'll have plenty of time for any new business that you'd like to discuss. So with that, today is April 16th. The next call will be taking place on April 30th. And all of the data cap is live. All of the allocators, I think there's 82 in total, have to receive the data cap. If you're an allocator and not received data cap, please reach out. I think there's one issue that's coming from 8031. And we'll talk about this on the call. So let's dive into an allocator responsibility. So as a check-in on the program, you as allocators have two main issues that you're responsible for in this role. The first is community is going to come to you with requests for data cap, and you serve as the first and last line to verify that that data is within the scopes of the program. And what that means is verifying that data, looking at the quality of it, and then ensuring that it meets the requirements for that data cap allocation. Part of this ties back into the second part of your responsibility, which is verifying that that data cap is distributed in line with the application that you set forward to be an allocator, which means if you're going to have a weekly allocation schedule of, say, 10%, then 20%, then 20%, then finally closing it off, but all of the data cap is going out all at once, it makes it really difficult to kind of make the case that you're performing within the bounds of the program. So I wanted to check in on this because we're going to start reaching this time where many of the allocators have allocated their initial five petabytes and are going to be coming to the governance team for a refresh on that data cap allocation. And if those allocators are not meeting the requirements set forward on the program, then they will not be eligible for a refresh on that data cap. So it's really mindful while we have these five petabytes that this is the time to really ensure that your bookkeeping plan is set up, that you're allocating on a distribution schedule that matches what you put forward in your application, and that you're flagging any issues that may happen with the governance team and tooling so we can address it. And this will really play in because again, if we have an organization that's been in the program, that's not adhering to the principles set up in their allocation, and it comes time for that data cap refresh, they will not be receiving it. So this is a quick check-in on what the program has and what the expectations are. I'll kind of pause to see if anybody has any questions or issues or like to add any additional thoughts on this topic while we're here. All right, so let's dive into support. So thank you for everyone for submitting tickets. This is making the process and communication much simpler and as a refresher, if you weren't here on the last governance call, what was happening is many blocks that were coming from the community were being sent in DMs to myself, to Will, to Galen, to KZ. And there was really no system to know who was serving to make sure that that issue was taken care of. Now we've set up this allocator repository registry. When you come in here to this page now, you can actually see, hey, it's been assigned to somebody. We'll tag it. We'll let you know. And this way, whenever anything comes in, we can leave a note like, hey, we're working on this. This is what the status and this is what's going to come back. Some of these issues can be resolved really quickly, like a change to the bookkeeping or GitHub. Anything that's a little bit more additional, like, hey, I want to change my L2 address or I want to make sure that something's going through. There might be a little bit of a time delay as we verify that the GitHub address filing the ticket is the same GitHub address associated with it, just to make sure that we're not getting these tickets that are coming from no one that is associated with the project. So if you have an issue, the best way to get it resolved, the simplest way to get it resolved is to form one of these allocator registry issues. And then myself, Galen, or a member of the Fiddle team can leave a comment and get back to you. Standard turnaround time is around a day to respond. And then depending on the severity of what we need to do, 
around another day or two at the longest to get back to you. Some of the issues that are in this registry right now, a little bit longer, are how are we removing the remaining data cap that might have been weakly distributed in a different way? So we're going to be talking about this as a team and putting a system in place that makes it a little bit more easy for those of you that have this issue in the future. But hopefully with tooling enhancements coming from Fiddle, this will be an issue that doesn't contain as we go forward. So thanks for your patience. Thanks for filing that. As always, if you're technically minded and you want to update the registry yourself, feel inclined to come through into the allocators page and you could modify the JSON and submit that branch. We'll take a look at it and then merge it in. So it's just your preference if you want to modify it or if you want to have the link. Personally, if you submit this ticket, this is probably the easiest way. That way we just have an audit log. It's community centered and we can come back to it. But if you notice anything on yourself, you're always encouraged to take a look at your own JSON file to verify why can I not sign this. This is the common thing for change in GitHub addresses. You'll need to allocate that change in your JSON file. Checking in, we had an issue come through on support in Slack this week that I just wanted to give an update. Mike, thanks for flagging this in the Allocator private channel for support. And what's happening is when the CID checker bot's running and you get this report that you see in the screenshot, everything will list out fine. But if you want to view the few full report, when folks are clicking that link, it's not coming back with the appropriate data. Spoke with Will, Will's working on progress. So if we don't see an update today or tomorrow, it should be coming sometime this week. And this will resolve this issue that you're seeing. So I wanted to call this out for two points. One, Mike, thanks for putting the screenshots in. It makes it so much easier if you say like, hey, this is a screenshot. This is the issue where I'm seeing it. It's really helpful to find it and identify it. And then two, we're working on updating that report so that you can see the full CID number as it comes through. So again, thanks for filing this. You should see a resolution by the week. All right, I'm gonna check in on tooling and updates. Usually Will or KZ or Marta from the Fiddle team will speak to this, but they are all traveling today. So I will do my best to channel my inner Will, kind of give you an update on what's going on. So Fiddle is the team that does a lot of the allocator tooling. They're responsible for allocator tech. They're responsible for taking a look at like how we can improve the technical implementation of this program to make it simple for allocators and beneficial for the community. And they have a repo, the Fiddle Labs Allocator Tooling Issues. And in that repo, repo, they list out the teams and progress that they're doing. So if you're ever curious if there's an issue or something that's on your mind that needs to be addressed, feel free to come over to this repo. As you can see right now, some of the big three that they're working on currently is bot enhancements for the program. So right now, should the issue modification replace the pull request? I've heard this come through in a couple of DMs. They've got it tagged as a P1, and this should remove that issue modification. So you're not having to do this manually every time. The second is the CID for checker tooling. We talked about this briefly. They flag this as a P1 to escalate that, and they'll get that back. And then you guys might have seen that there's this slingshot data tag that's coming through in a lot of these, even though it's not associated with the slingshot data. So they're well aware of that and they're working on it. So again, if you are curious what enhancements are coming or there's an issue that you're encountering in the community, feel free to bring it up into the Slack channel, or you can always come check this board if you're curious what the fiddle team is working on. KZ, who's a member of the fiddle team, has committed to posting about every week, every other week, an update from what's going on on his team. So I want to call this out as like ways that we're trying to like streamline and keep you abreast of what's going on behind the scenes. He posted three big updates and to call them out, essentially right now when you were an allocator tech, you can now scroll addresses past the limit of five. We got this coming through in DMs of like, hey, I have more than five addresses and it's currently impossible to find the address if it's below that number five. So Fiddle Team prioritize that. And when you come through now in that registry page, you should be able to see around 20 addresses, which should alleviate that pain as it's coming back. The second is that if a client had previously used the address, could you have some kind of a warning that this was put in? So you'll see point number two, that warning's been added where the wallet address has already been used. Please continue in that thread as well. So that way as an allocator, you're not having to always check this back and forth but rely on the tooling to help you make that. And then the third was a lot of the work that we started last year in 2023 by Phil with the CID checker. 
So a lot of these tools will now be put into place, and this is going to help you with your pathway. And this is what's going to be fixed in that link. So when you click that report in the link, you'll be able to see all of the report generated by the CID checker. So these toolings should hopefully make your quality of life a little bit easier as you're working as an allocator. If there's anything else you'd like to see, please let us know. And again, it's all under the allocation tool. Before I go on, Eric, I see your question. Does this mean Project Slingshot is sunset by now? I honestly don't know the answer. I haven't heard a lot of Slingshot since probably about three or so months ago. I'll make a note to follow up with some of the teams that were working on Slingshot. And I'll post in the Slack or on the next governance call as far as like, what is the status of the Slingshot? Is that going to be renewed and going forward? If anybody else on the line has any information on Slingshot, feel free to let us know now. Eric, I'll ask, I'll post in uh, the allocator chat so that you'll have an update. I'll probably get that to you probably within the end of day tomorrow once I hear back from some of the teams that we're working. Thanks for that question. All right, support. Support links going on right now. So just as a refresher, we have two links that are meant to be documents that should answer a lot of the common support tooling FAQs for process. We talked about this on the April 2nd call. I left this slide in just to have it as a refresh for you. That way you bookmark these two links. The goal is that we're gonna update these links continually. Some of the feedback we've heard in the past is that there's so many sources of truth for a program that's been around this many years and has this many different participants. So as we work to streamline this allocator process, one of the goals would be trying to unify where that documentation can be found. But if you hit an issue with Allocator or you have a question, these two links are great places to go. At the very top, you're going to be taken to the update procedure for applications. This was put together by Will, the fiddle. And this is if you have any kind of technical blockers that you want to modify. This could be the weekly allocation schedule. This could be the data types, whatever you may see. And this is meant to serve as like a how do I solve this myself? The second link put together was a common list of allocator FAQs. Now, this is as of February, so you can see how much time goes by between these getting written and these coming back. But this answers questions like, hey, I put in my application. How long do I have to wait for the data cap? Or how much data cap will I receive? Or how do I ensure that my schedules are following? A lot of the questions that we get in DM, we're putting in this doc, and we'll probably be updating this in the coming days to make sure that this is current and giving you what you need as it goes forward. So again, if you haven't bookmarked these two links, very helpful for you. All right, we talked about the weekly data cap distribution, and I wanted to check in on this because this topic is gonna really apply for you allocators that are looking for a data cap refresh. So essentially, every allocator received five petabytes, and every allocator committed in their application to a schedule that they would distribute that five petabytes. How many copies, where would it go? How would they issue that data cap on the schedule? So as we start to receive these requests for allocation, we're gonna be looking very carefully at how is that data cap pushed out? So you should be very mindful as an allocator, are you adhering to this schedule? Typically, within average, most allocators had a tranche system where the initial allocation of data cap was small. And as that applicant continued to bring the data cap on, the allocator would continue to grant substantially more and more data cap. That's a great way to structure it. A bad way to structure that weekly data cap is where a client requests five petabytes and then five petabytes goes out in that single application. Bad news. So we realized that over the last two weeks, there was an issue where that pull request would come through and it would automatically distribute that full amount. So Fiddle has gone through and they've updated the tooling so now you can see it in the allocator tech page when you come through. And hopefully with the goal of this is that it makes it a lot easier for you in the community to see the applications that are coming through and actually get a feel of like how much data cap is going out. So I wait for this to load live. I'll actually just load the slide. You can actually see now in the application what the weekly allocation is set to. So if that weekly allocation is outside of the bounds for what you should be distributing, you can now see it as well as a bar chart of how that application has gone out from the percentage wise. So as an allocator, it's your responsibility to check this and ensure. 
So if you see that 100% of the data cap for this application has gone out in the first week, that should be, I'm filing a ticket, I'm raising an issue, I'm trying to correct this. This shouldn't be left until it's time to refresh your data cap. And then you're reaching out, hey, I want new data cap, but you've only got one client, and you only had one distribution for five petabytes. That won't be met with very reticent, here's more data cap for you to go forward. We're looking for these allocators for you to maintain these standards that you've set out for yourself going forward. So as a quick check, in the allocator registry, the tooling that's set up, when you see these, you can see the data cap amount that was requested, the status that it goes through, and this is going to give you those screenshots that we talked about for how much data cap went out in the program. So let us know if there's any tooling issues. This is what Fiddle has been working on to make this as simple as possible for you. And then you can see each application, what the status is. And if you want, you can view the additional details, which you should know. And this is going to give you those allocation, the replica counts, the status, and how far it's been. So thank you for everyone that's been taking part. Please continue the feedback. I'll get you what you need as you go through. Lastly, for FAQs, these are the most common questions that have come through in Slack and DMs and in the support channel. And as a reminder, any issues that you have, please bring them to the allocator registry. Again, it makes it so simple and so speedy to work with multiple teams to get that issue filed for you. So that's allocator registry. It's pinned in Slack. It's in this slide. And we posted it there before. The number one thing is, hey, I want to make sure that some of my data cap distribution deals are not outliers to the program. I want to know who else is working and how much data cap that they've sent out. And I highly recommend you do this. If you're an allocator that's already allocated five petabytes, that could be that puts you in the top 1% for that deal making, which isn't a bad thing. But you might want to see, am I distributing along the same lines of my peers or other allocators? Great way to check is you come to the Notary Data Cap Stats page, and you can see where a lot of that data is going out, as well as always just coming back to the Fill Tooling page. So if you're curious, what are the amounts? How much is going out? This is a great way to look too. So if you're constantly requesting 10 PIBs, but you're the only one doing it, this is a great way to look like, well, if I'm bringing on this much data cap, am I still maintaining my standards going forward? So please continue to check that. Please continue to kind of keep an eye and we'll also do the same on the governance side. This question has come up in DM, just wanna flag it again. Under the old system in 2023, we had a public facing repository where members of the community could come request data cap by filling out a form. Right now, the only way for data cap is for those community members to come fill out an issue in your bookkeeping plan. So, hey, my name's Kevin, I'm with the foundation. I'd like to onboard with this. Then you perform your diligence with those individuals. You can also check the Slack. It's the link here in this bookmark that you see. This Slack is a great way when anybody messages me and they're like, hey, Kevin, I'm looking for data cap. Can you help connect me with somebody? I always encourage them to remain neutral to please post in this channel. So if you're an allocator and you're looking for data cap deals, if you're looking for signatures, this is the channel that you want to go check. It's the Bill Plus application review. That's where this link will take you. And this is a great way if you're an allocator looking to test or find people to connect with, that's where they are. And the last and most common issue that we get is, hey, I'm trying to sign an issue, I'm getting blocked. The answer, it's because of the JSON handle for your GitHub is not correct. This could be due to capitalizations, this could be changes in the people on your team. Whatever the issue, if you find that when you're in the allocator tooling, and you click on the GitHub and you're unable to sign an issue, the reason why is your JSON file for your allocator is not the same as the GitHub that you're using. The most simple way to get around that is to file an issue here. We can update that and then get that back on track for you. So again, if you're having any issues with the signing, nine times out of 10, that's the reason why it's the GitHub handle. I've seen a couple requests for changes on the multi-sig for new F1 users. So again, if the mem Galen sets your address up, you will need to create a ticket essentially for us to come back and modify it. If you set your own address up, you can do this yourself by going to the Glyph page, connecting your wallet, and then you can see the multi-sig. I've seen a request that came through just a day or so ago. It looks like, yeah, just need to change my address on this. So what I'll do is I'll follow up, making sure that did we set up your address or did you? 
and then we'll take next steps to follow up. Again, some of these issues can go really quick. Some of these, because of the diligence, might take a day or two. So I'll leave you like a really brief comment inside of these issues as they come in. Like this one, hey, we're just going to look into it. If there's any questions, we'll circle back. And that way, we might ask for your token code. We might ask for some additional information. So appreciate that. Galen, I see your hand. The floor is yours, bud. Yes, thank you. Um, a couple of things on that. If you need to change your address and you need to add an address, uh, it would be very wise for that address to be initialized on chain, meaning it has already like received some fill and been able to send messages. Um, if you have a brand new ledger address that you have not used yet, it does not have a create time on chain. And sometimes when we attempt to add that address to a multi-sig, um, we will get an error because the chain says that address is not yet initialized. Um, so just sometimes that issue pops up. The best thing to do, this is also a good way to confirm you have that address, you have the keys to it, you can send messages um, from that ledger address and sign things. So going in, making sure that you have the public address, send it just a small amount of seed fill that will also help cover gas message uh, or gas fees. Um, and then it'll be, it'll have a create time. So if you need to change the address on your multi-sig, please do that step first. Um, that will help. And that also helps us know uh, that, that that address is definitely ready to go. Um, we're going to be working on getting through those. I've seen a couple people um, that opened PRs uh, already to change things like GitHub handles. Um, I think there's still an issue with capitalization and making sure that capitalization works correctly. Um, and I think that's an open ticket with the Fiddle team to get that sort of case standardized. Um, so hopefully with that, those have been like Kara saying, the two like biggest um, kind of bugs or issues that people have brought up. But the biggest one that I want to like reiterate that K Ray was already talking about was this issue around the amount of data cap that is going out. Um, the burden is on the allocator to verify the client behavior. So if the client shows up and makes a claim and says, I would like one PIB of data cap a week, I have an eight PIB project, I think that I can onboard one PIB a week. You, the allocator, need to go back to your application and look at your data cap allocation strategy, look at your details that you submitted. Because if you are giving out more data cap than you claimed, as an initial allocation, that is going to put you not in compliance with your application. So even if this client has worked with other notaries or other allocators in the past, this is a new interaction with you. And so for a lot of people, a lot of allocators said that their first allocation would either be 5% of the total or 50% of the weekly whichever is lower, and that they would use the various subsequent allocation bots or subsequent allocation bot logic to not give out additional data cap until they have verified that that first tranche has been used and has been used according to their stated goals. So if a client shows up and asks for a PIB and you give them a PIB and then they show up two days later and they ask for two PIBs and they have only done deals with one SP, the burden is on you, the allocator, to communicate to your client that they are not yet approved because they are not meeting your requirements of deal distribution and data onboarding rates. So even if they kick off a request or the bot kicks off a request, you need to go perform the diligence to say, how are they storing their data? Is it going where they said it would go? Does it meet my distribution requirements? So in other sections, question number 22, how many replicas will you require? Question 23, 
What geographic distribution do you require? The burden is on you, the allocator, to hold your clients accountable. So if the client shows up and they've used one PIB a week, they gave it all to one storage provider. The burden is on you to say, you are not using the data cap the way that I expected you to. I am not going to give you more. That is how you hold your clients accountable. We, the governance team, hold you accountable. So when you go and you work with a handful of clients and you come back and say, I'm out of data cap, can I have more? And we investigate how your clients are behaving and they are doing deals that are not according to your application. You can't just say, well, but we can't control the clients. We're not responsible for the clients. You are responsible for holding your clients accountable. And that is why in the initial fit, it has this whole section about scaling trust over time. You need to give a small amount of data cap, let a client start to use that and determine if they are going to meet your standards. And then over time, you can give them larger amounts of data cap because they have already shown they are ready to do deal making. They know how to do the data preparation. They have an appropriate set of SPs. They know how to do the data distribution that you are requiring. So we, the governance team, are gonna hold the allocators accountable. You have to hold your clients accountable. And the clients have to hold their SPs accountable. That's how the chain is gonna all work. We can't make the SPs do something different. We have only power and leverage over should an allocator get more data cap or not. So we will be using compliance checklists and basically saying, show us all of your allocations. We're going to check the bookkeeping history. How much data cap did you give out? How quickly did you give it out? Were your clients meeting your specified application? And if they are not, and if you are continuing to give them data cap, even though they are using it too quickly, they're not distributing it, and the deals are not retrievable, then you will not be getting additional data cap because you are not holding your clients accountable. Just wanted to reiterate that um, as we move into the, the time when people are starting to get to that 75% um, or worse. So we are starting to do those checks this week. We're starting to make those uh, compliance checklists public. You'll see those in um, GitHub issues. Uh, you'll see the, the requests for more data cap um, as well as the compliance checklist. So we're working on getting a whole lot of new issue templates um, where people will be able to open support issue template uh, where they say, I need to make this change. But they will also be able to open issues to say, I'm ready to receive data cap. And as we increase the automation, those issues will get opened automatically as notaries have used it and pre-filled out with as much detail as possible. Um, so stay tuned. It's going to we're, we're adding more of that automation, but right now it is still a very manual and slow process. So bear with us. Okay, Ray, back to you. Thanks, Galen. Appreciate that additional detail for that. With that, we'll turn it over to the floor. We have a few people on the call. Eric, Lind, Mike, CZ, Phil, you can, anything on your mind, anything you're blocked on, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you so much for your time, your participation, your contributions to the program. This is the first call. Next call will be taking place at 0200 UTC. Very similar format. A few more people on the line. So if there's anything that came to mind, looking forward to seeing you all. As always, thanks for your time. Hey, friendly hellos. Welcome to the second Allocator Governance Call of April 16th. Let's take a look at the agenda. For those of you on the call, we're going to check in with issues related to you for allocators right up front. Number one is looking at the responsibilities for allocators. So this will be a check-in for those of you that have received your data cap and been issued it. Just a friendly check-in on how you should be dispersing, what you should expect with the upcoming audits, and how to get a data fresh recap. We'll also check in on the weekly distribution schedules. This was a big impact over the last two weeks. Make sure that no one is currently impacted now, and if so, just check in so we can help you and get you support. Then we'll talk about what happens if you need a data cap refresh and what to expect in that process and timelines. 
And then last two is tooling updates and what to expect with the CID checker, the link when you have your application working in progress and giving you those updates. As far as FAQs, these will be things that have come in through DMs and just making sure that issues that we've solved for one person can be shared with the other community. As the morning call, this call typically took around 20, 30 minutes, lots of activity time at the end if you have any questions or issues, always feel free to post in chat and we'll get you support. This is the April 16th call. Next call will take place on 30 April, and the two times are 0900, 1600 UTC, 1900, 02. And in the slide deck is the link if you want to add this to your calendar. All right, let's jump right in. So allocators on the call, you know by now that you had your data cap. It's been out there for about four and a half weeks. Just as a friendly reminder, if you're just tuning in or you are an allocator, hey, you're ready to go. You should be set up. Let us know if you need anything. For responsibilities, there are three main roles that the allocators are serving in the Falcon Plus program. Number one is that you're verifying these applications that come through, verifying that they meet the requirements, that the data meets the requirements, that everything's been vetted. You are essentially notarizing the allocation that you're going to make. So be very mindful of that for any kind of application that you're pursuing. The expectation is that you're doing this diligence on those. And then the second thing is, once you've approved those applications, you're verifying that the data cap that you are allocating is meeting within the timelines that you set forward. So if you remember in your allocator application, questions 29 through 33 are all about the allocation schedule that you're gonna put forward. Hey, in the first week, they'll get 5%, week two, they'll get 10%, yada, yada. So this means that if you have an applicant who's getting say, five petabytes in one allocation right off the bat, it's not in compliance. And essentially there's no due diligence run. Now, obviously there might be an issue like we had with the weekly allocation schedule. Please flag it and make sure that you're trying to tie that in. Because what happens is if any of these irregularities aren't addressed or put forward, when it comes time for a data cap refresh after that five petabytes, it will be denied because you're out of compliance with what you spelled out. So with this on the call, take a look. Take a look at what distributions have gone out. We'll show you how that works on this call if you need a refresher. And just being mindful of the fact that as you're rolling an allocator, it's not just reviewing, but also making sure that that data cap is going out as it should be. And for the data cap refresh, we started to get some pings. So congratulations, thank you. What will happen is if you need a data cap refresh, you're gonna see tomorrow, a selection in the allocator repository issue repo, GitHub repo, and you could fill it out. Hey, I'm Kevin. I'm with the foundation. I'd like to apply for my next tranche of data cap. So submit that in GitHub. What the governance team will then do is we will start looking at the distributions that you've made up to this point. And what we're checking is does it align with the application? So again, if you said that you were going to allocate data cap on a schedule that would go out at 5%, then 10%, then 20%, and what we see is there's just one large application and one large distribution that went out, that will be denied. And we'll say that we're not in compliance with this and we cannot award you more data cap as it goes out. So this is that real critical time in this first tranche to ensure that you're self looking at these applications to make sure that they're compliant with that. Because if they're not, then you won't be eligible for this data cap refresh. So that audit will take a couple of days. We haven't determined as we work this out for the first time, it might take a lot, it might take a little, and we'll kind of get a feel for it. But again, if there's any irregularities, we'll reach out and we'll say, hey, allocator, we see that the application did not match what you did in real life. Therefore, you're not eligible for this going forward because you didn't maintain the diligence that you put forward. So in GitHub, you'll see that application for refresh that comes up, which will trigger that compliance audit. If you have questions, great places to ask are in the allocator private channel for tactical things or in the allocator registry issue in GitHub that you form. It's a great way to keep track of this, make it public, and then put it out for community review. For support, if you need anything, as a friendly reminder, we talk about this allocator registry. You'll see that in GitHub. If you don't have it already, in the slide deck, if you click this link, you'll load this allocator registry, and this is the perfect spot to get help for anything that you may need. In the past, we relied on Slack DMs or Slack messages, 
And as the program grows and as the teams kind of work on different projects, it's becoming more and more difficult to find the right stakeholders to help solve the right problems. So with this issue template, now you can just come in here and say, hey, I have an issue with confirming information, or hey, I need to update a ledger address, or hey, my GitHub user hasn't changed. You'll see me tag myself. If it's something that I can solve, I'll immediately close it. And I might leave a comment for you like, hey, I've done this. If there's anything else to need, let me know. And if I don't hear back from you, I'll just assume everything's good and close it. Feel free to reopen the issue. So again, if there's anything that you need as far as support, always feel free to post in Slack. But posting here in this registry will just make it a little bit faster. And members of the Fiddle team, Galen and myself will see this and we'll be able to get you what you need a lot faster as we go through it. Galen, I see your hand. Thanks. Floor is yours. Yes, I just wanted to jump in. I know like right now, there's a number of, of issues that are popping up a couple of times, um, like multi-sigs and uh, like issues with the JSON file. Um, some people are opening PRs, which is great. It makes those faster. Um, we are working to create some issue templates um, for these common things. And I think those templates will help a lot, um, which is kind of filling out the common uh, support needs more quickly, getting us as much information and as much detail as possible. But a couple of things that have come up, and sorry if I'm out of order, K-Ray, I can't remember if we talk about this later on. Um, with the multi-sig, the way that we set it up, there is a F2 multi-sig that should have probably two signers on it with a threshold of one. That multi-sig is the thing that has the data cap on chain. If the address that is on that multi-sig is not correct, if it's not your ledger address, if it's not the address that you have configured um, to be able to send messages and you need to change that address, then currently, if I'm the one who created that multi-sig and you don't have access to the other address that's on there, then I'll be the one that has to add that. Um, the thing that is going to help make that process go faster is if you have initialized that address on chain. So if you send that address that is your ledger address a message with some fill, that is going to help cover your message gas fees later on. But that is also going to help prove that that address is initialized and ready on chain. Um, and then we can add it to that multi-sig. If it's an issue in GitHub with um, other kind of GitHub handles or things like that. We've been working through verifying those and merging those pull requests. Um, there was one that I just pushed just now. Hopefully that helps. And then just reiterating something that, you know, K Ray mentioned a second ago around the data cap um, top up. We, the governance team, will do a compliance check. We have a checklist uh, that we're working on. It's still in draft form, we're trying to get that out. It's going to be manual right now, but it, we're going to be working on getting it more and more automated. But basically, we have to hold you, the allocator, accountable. You have to hold your clients accountable. Your clients have to hold the storage providers accountable. And that's sort of the flow of how it works. So you applied to be an allocator and said, we would work with clients. And those clients, we expect those clients to work with SPs that meet a certain level of retrievability. We expect our clients to do a certain amount of deal distribution. We expect our clients to use data cap at a certain rate. If you start approving clients and they are using data cap faster than your stated allocation plan, or if you're not verifying that they are landing these deals on chain before subsequent allocations, or if they are only dealing with storage providers that are not distributed, and you said that you would require a certain number of copies, you, the allocator, are responsible for communicating to your client, you are not meeting my program needs. And you, the allocator, need to tell your clients that they need to adjust their behavior. Um, otherwise, your clients are not in compliance with your pathway. Your pathway is then not in compliance with your application. 
So that is what we are checking to determine, should we award more data cap? Should we request more data cap from the root key holders to these allocators? So I encourage you, if you have started giving data cap out to clients, we need to go verify that the amounts of data cap you gave match your applications. Specifically in the questions 29 through um, you know, 34, it has data cap allocation strategy. There's questions in there about your tranche schedule. How are you going to give out data cap? At what rate? How will you make subsequent allocations? When you think that you are running out of data cap and ready to request more from the governance team and the root key holders, that's what we're going to be checking. So if you have only worked with three clients and you have given out four PIBs of data cap to three clients and they have not been following your allocation strategy or your data distribution, then you are potentially not going to get new tranches of data cap. You will need to wait. You will need to adjust your tooling. You will need to adjust the clients that you're working with. You will need to reapply. You will need to convince the community that you are going to meet your stated allocation plan. So bear that all in mind. Um, be looking at your clients. You need to be holding them accountable to what they claim and to what you said in your application um, in December and January. So just wanted to re reiterate all of that um, and pass it back over to Kay Ray. Thanks for that, Galen. Appreciate the detail add. If anybody has questions about that, great time. Just shoot a hand up or leave a comment in chat and circle back to anything you may be curious about. For getting support, the two easiest ways is posting in Slack or filing an issue in the registry. To all of you that have done that, thank you. We can work with the dev teams, we can work with the tooling teams and make sure that they learn the lessons and build in tooling that will streamline this going forward. If you have anything that you need, as always, Slack is the perfect place for faster comms. The best way is in the allocator channel. What happens with DMs is conversations get forked. Then we have to go back and verify that who we're talking with is actually the person from the organization really slows it down. So messaging us in the allocator channel, if, you, if there's anything, that's the fastest way to get a response and get help as we go forward. If you're technically mindful, a lot of the changes can happen directly in the JSON file. So under allocators, each JSON file contained for each allocator will have the names, the GitHub issue, the F1, F2 addresses, bookkeeping plans. So if you're ever keen, you're welcome and able to modify your organization's JSON file or just submit a ticket and the governance team will take care of all that for you and merge it into the main branch. So a check-in, thank you, thank you, thank you for flagging this with screenshots and really detailed information. Call out to Mike, who was on the morning call. Essentially what happened was whenever the CID and the data cap checker were running, the report that was generated was not producing any kind of information that was coming back. So Will, who sits on the fiddle team, has escalated this and prioritized this. We should see a fix by end of week, if not already, when I check this. But this was a perfect example of just thank you for flagging this. We have a friendly team of engineers that will come back and get this taken care of. So if anybody was looking, this link should be working by end of week at the absolute latest. Thanks again. All right, tooling check. So as you know, the Fiddle team is responsible for working on the actual tooling that will be used from the allocators. And they have a GitHub repository that they update and they keep track. They work with a couple of developer teams. So again, really easy way to keep track of this. If you're ever curious what's coming down the pipeline, here's the link. It's the Fiddle Labs Allocator Tooling Issues. Also, feel free to leave a comment. Hey, this is Kevin with the foundation. This really is impacting my workflow. I'd like to just bump this and escalate the priority. Whenever we get this community feedback, we try to implement it into the roadmap plans so it matters, your voice is heard. Please leave a comment, leave any issues, and it will help get that escalated. The three main enhancements that they're working on right now is the issue modification. What's going to replace that pull request? So that way there's not this back and forth between that change on your end. 
They're also just rolled out the CID checker. Some of you might have already seen that on a lot of your applications. So you should see that rolling. And then also removing the slingshot data type. You might have seen this in some of the ones that have come through. And so this is a great way to kind of get that back. So we'll give you an update. For those of you on this call, one of the questions that came in from Eric on the morning was, hey, what's the status of Slingshot these days? So there's a channel called Slingshot. I sent a ping, we're waiting to hear back. As you might have worked with Slingshot in the past, we had a V3, this ran around September of 2023. And we don't know what the status is, if there's gonna be a V4 or not. So as soon as we hear back from the teams that are running that Slingshot, I'll post that answer back in the allocator channel. KZ, who works on the Fiddle team, is going to start pushing a report every Monday or so, just a quick highlight of what their teams rolled out. So if you haven't already seen it, this is just a friendly plug for that update that took place on April 15th. And they're essentially talking about some of the enhancements that you'll see to tooling. This is a great chance to also leave feedback like, hey, KZ, thanks for these. We'd really like to see something else. <laughs> Please let them know. Again, Fiddle Team works for you. If there's tooling that would make your life easier or help you do your jobs better, please let them know, either in the GitHub issues that they have or directly comments on that. We talked about this on a call two weeks ago. I left this in just because to make sure you had access to these. There's two links that have a lot of FAQ documentation. These are also pinned in the Slack channel if you're keen to take a look. But essentially what we've been doing is collecting the FAQs that come through and try to put them in one centralized place. This gets really tricky, takes a lot of time. And you can see the last time that we updated this was in February. So it goes really quick as this program evolves and moves so rapidly. But if you're ever looking for a question or you have a storage provider or an applicant that's asking questions, having these sources of truth should be a lot more helpful and valuable. And we're also gonna work much more on diligence once we get past this election and onboarding to try to help so you have lots of reference materials for anybody here working with. Let's check in on the weekly data cap distribution. So as a refresher, what was happening two, three weeks ago was that whenever the data cap allocation was being dispersed, there was no way to limit how much data cap was going out. So unless you, the allocator, came back in and said, hey, this is way too much data cap to go out in that first tranche, you had to manually adjust this. So to Galen's point, it's your role as the allocator to monitor how much data is going out. You are responsible for your data cap that you've had going out. So to kind of check in and update on this one, there's been a lot of tooling that's been rolled out. So we'll push this out as an update last week. So you don't have to go back and manually change your file application to say what weekly application should go back. But also be very mindful Again, if you are allocating, you should have a schedule that adheres to question 30, where if you get a one terabyte application that comes through, you're going to give them 10%, then 20%, then 30%. As Galen mentioned, when we look at that data cap refresh, if we don't see you sticking to the general guidelines that you've spilled out in your application, it makes it really difficult to justify a data cap refresh. So please take a look at your registry Take a look at the allocator tooling. Make sure that the weekly allocation is in line with what you assume should be going out. Because again, as the allocator, that is your role to check. The governance team won't check it until it comes time for the refresh. And again, if we're finding these things on the data cap refresh, it will be too late to give you that. So please, 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 please take a look at your applications, check your registry, and ensure that the data cap that you're distributing is in line with what you spelled out. And to verify that, again, if you come into the registry and allocator tech, one of the new features that they've built in is that you can actually see that weekly allocation schedule and how much data cap has been used. So if you see that bar is all the way max full throttle, there's an issue and a great way is come make an issue here in the allocators. Like, hey, I've seen my data cap didn't come back can you please request to move that data cap? Thank you for those of you that have. We've got these bookmarks. Once we get the tooling in place to take care of that automatically for you, we'll close these out and there won't be anything to worry about. So again, if you see it, just make an issue with the registry and we'll help get that pulled back for you. Any questions, feel free to shoot a hand up or let us know in Slack. Lastly, let's check in on some of the FAQs. 
Common question we get is, hey, I'm encountering an issue. What should I do about it? As we said on this call, coming to GitHub Allocator Registry is the perfect place, the fastest solution, and links all teams. Make an issue, we'll all tag, and then we'll get you the support you need. Second question we've seen is like, hey, how do I know the other allocators? What are they distributing? Great way to do that is you come to datacap.stats, and if you enter their address into PhilFox, you can see all of the addresses that are pulled. And then also in the Filecoin Allocator Tech tooling that Fiddle built, you can also see the other amounts, the other allocators, and how much data cap has gone out. And this has been one of those questions for some allocators that have asked, am I in the upper bounds? Am I in the lower bounds? Am I kind of in the medium? So this is a great way to kind of check in on that. Ongoing, one of the questions that came up two weeks ago and again was, what do we do to new applicants that want to request data cap? It used to be that we had this site, billplus.storage. Anybody could come and request data cap and they would be matched with an allocator. Now, they're going to be coming to this channel in Slack or messaging you directly. So let's talk about Slack first. The Slack channel is called Allocation Review or Application Review, excuse me. And the link here in Slack will let anybody say, hey, I'm Kevin in the foundation. I've got this data set. I'm looking for an allocator to help me onboard this. This is a great way you could reach out and say, yes, I'd like to help you with that. Here's my bookkeeping repo. Fill out this diligent plan. It used to be that with an LDN, we could just pipe these out. But now they have to directly go to an allocator. So if you have anybody that's coming to you requesting this data cap, they'll be coming to you directly. If you're looking for somebody and want to test, run, or onboard, this Slack will have lots of applications and a great way to reach out. And some of the last questions is, hey, I still can't sign. The reason why you can't sign is because the tooling is going to pull your GitHub address, as you can see from this screenshot here. So if you sign into Allocator Tech and your GitHub handle has a different capitalization than your JSON file, it's not going to know who you are. So please just come file an issue. Hey, I'd like to change my name on here. So we have this one from Lendy Mai. Hey, I want to change my issue. We can pull it up. Sometimes this might take a couple of days as we look into this and just make sure that everything works out. But this is the perfect place to come and make sure that you're all set up as we go forward. And the last one that we've got is something's changed on my side and I need to change my F1 users to the existing multi-sig. Really basic, if you set your multi-sig up yourself using Glyph, just connect your wallet and you can do this. If you had the foundation or Galen set this up, what you'll need to do is that additional step of filing this issue. It's a little bit more complex. We have to go in on the back end. So if you file one of these that I need to have a different address, please be patient with us as we set this up, verify that and go forward. And to the point that Galen made earlier, having that address that you had previously and then having that transaction already will also make that a lot faster. And then having that gas fee coverage will also save you pain in the later to come. So with that, that was everything we wanted to cover. The CID tooling, how to get ready for a data cap refresh, how to ask for any support, and then update you on some of the tooling that will come. With that, I'll pause and turn the floor over to you for any questions or thoughts or input you want to discuss. The floor is yours.